Coming to the word of God, hallelujah, praise God. Book of Acts chapter 1, few verses I just want to read before you. My title will be seven important things Jesus delivered unto the disciples before he ascended to heaven. I just want to read, I mean chapter 1, few verses for you. The first account I composed Theophilus about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Until the day when he was taken up to heaven after he had by the Holy Spirit given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To this he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proof. Appearing to them over a period of 40 days speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. Gathering them together he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem but to wait for what the father had promised. Which he said you heard of from me. For John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. When they had come together they were asking him saying Lord is it this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel. He said to them it's not for you to know the times of ages which the father has fixed by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem. In Judea, Samaria, even to the uttermost part of the earth. And after he had said these things, he was taken up while they were looking on. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky, while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing stood beside them. They also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus, whom you have seen, taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you are watching him going up to heaven. Seven important things that the Jesus delivered unto disciples before he ascended to heaven. Are you ready to receive that seven blessings that Jesus wanted disciples to receive from him? Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Number one, Bible says verse two. Until the day he was taken up to heaven, he had by Holy Spirit given Orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. Bible says, Gospel of Matthew chapter 28 verses, I mean 18, 19 and 20 says that Jesus said, All authority in heaven and in earth given unto me. Now therefore you go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And teach them to observe all what I commanded to you. Hallelujah. That was a four way order Jesus given. Hallelujah. Jesus was not telling disciples all authority given to me in heaven and earth. Would you please go for me? He said go. It was a royal command. It was a royal order. Go for me. Amen. Make disciples for me. Baptize them and teach them. It was an order not to the ordinary people but only for the people who are specifically chosen by God. Hallelujah. How many of you have the royal decree from heaven? Heaven, royal order from heaven Jesus said go for me make disciples for me baptize them and teach them to observe whatever I commanded to you hallelujah praise the Lord from a remote village of South India not knowing any other languages not known any other cities of the, of the, of the same state of South India hallelujah but because of God's great command over me great decree over me I'm not telling talking about the PhD degree paper certificate. I'm not talking about the MDH certificate. I'm not talking about the doctor certificate or a seminary certificate. I'm talking about the decree, the order from the king of kings. And he is given that order to everyone who are chosen, who are specifically called by God. How many disciples are here today? 
and we have a royal decree from heaven we are not the ordinary people even enemy knows whether you are the person in authority or not enemy knows whether you have received the real authority or decree order from heaven or not if you are the person ex experiencing and exercising the royal decree from heaven you can sit simply in the chair hallelujah and sing two songs and go back to home on a Sunday you cannot be just a Sunday Christian if you are under the order of heaven if you are a person specifically chosen by God and living under the order of heaven hallelujah you your lifestyle will be different your walking style will be different your talking style will be different the way you approach the way you behave the way you pray the way you preach the way you witness will be different because you are a person specifically called by God and you have been given the royal decree from heaven hallelujah you, the Lord is telling Jeremiah Jeremiah even before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you even before you came out of your mother's womb I have consecrated you to be the prophet over the nations that means even God was trying to tell Jeremiah even before your mama and papa I saw you. I saw you. Praise the Lord. I saw you. Discover the anointed project of God in you. Discover the anointed person living in you. Discover the higher call of God that is in you. Discover the person in you. You are not an ordinary person. You, you have an extraordinary call of God upon your life. You cannot live like an ordinary. You are extraordinary because the one who live in you is an extraordinary Jesus. The one who is living in you, the anointing you carry is not ordinary anointing. It is extraordinary anointing of the Holy Ghost. Second thing, Bible says, he also, verse 3, he also presented himself alive after his suffering. He appeared to them. Jesus wanted every disciple to meet him personally, to have an encounter with Christ. Jesus appeared to them. Jesus spoke to them. Many times I ask the question, Lord, after the, after the resurrection, before the ascension, there were 40 days Jesus spent time with the disciples. Jesus didn't go anywhere to raise the dead body or do any other miracles. Rather, Jesus spent all those days to spend time with the disciples. Jesus wanted to appear to them, talk to them, be with them. Hallelujah. Even today, Jesus appears to so many. Hallelujah. Even today, he is sending his angels, hallelujah, to speak to the people, appear to many of the people, hallelujah, around the world. I believe, I believe God appointed ministering angels for you. Any time that angels will be ready to look after you, to provide for you, to come on your way, to rescue you. Hallelujah. You have to allow the Lord. You have to allow them. You have to ask the Lord to release them. You never hinder them. The same way, I believe God can come to you. He can come and talk with you. He can sit with you in the chair. As Bible says, he can prepare a table for you in the face of your enemies hallelujah when enemies are all looking at you I will be talking about your source enemies. We don't have enemies. We have only one enemy, right? Hallelujah. Maybe your sickness can be your enemy. Maybe that depression will look at you to devour you. Hallelujah. Your cancer, your serious situations of your life stand like an enemy. Look at you to destroy you. But in front of every one of them, still God can come down for you. And he can prepare a table for you. He can sit with you face to face while every enemy looks looking on. Hallelujah! Our God is such an awesome God. No sickness can destroy you. Hallelujah! No black magic can destroy you. No sorcery can destroy you. No cancer in the last stage can destroy you. No financial problem can destroy you. While all this enemy is looking on, still my God is a powerful God. He comes down for you. He prepared the devil for you. Give him the glory and the honor today. Number three, speaking for over a period of 40, thing, 40 days, speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. 
Number three was Jesus gave the name message, message, the kingdom message. Jesus knew they are, they are, they are, they are called by God. All the disciples are called by God to speak the kingdom. Before they speak the kingdom, likewise I said about chicken biryani, Hyderabadi. Unless they taste it, how they can present it. You have to taste first before you present something. Hallelujah. Jesus wanted every disciple to experience the kingdom. Receive the real message. Not just the ordinary sermon. But the message from the heart of God. Hallelujah. Jesus wanted to open the kingdom truth to them. Jesus wanted to, hallelujah, open the glorious truth to them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Same like in the book of Esther, chapter 1. There's a Persian king called for a 180 days feast. Right? Not a fasting. I think feast. Of course. It's a feasting. 180 days, 6 months feasting. He called all the important officials of his kingdom. To have a 180 days feast. Right from India to Ethiopia. 127 provinces are there. The king rules. He brought all the important officials. Bible says the purpose of the feast was. Not to give them a good food. Rather to to. Display the riches of his glory. Hallelujah. And the splendor of the majesty of the kingdom. Hallelujah. If that earthly king had the, had the desire for all the important officials in the kingdom to see the riches of the glory of the kingdom and the splendor of his majesty, how much more our heavenly king, our king of king has. Hallelujah. He wanted every one of us to see the truth of his kingdom, the glory of his kingdom, the power of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The majesty of his kingdom. That's what happened when Jesus spent the 40 important days with the disciples he wanted to open the kingdom towards the disciple he spoke regarding the kingdom we need the real message for this mess age but number four number four gathering them together verse four he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem number four was a command to them to remain in the presence of God many of us we, have, we are in the presence of God only when we are in the church. We don't have presence of God. We don't want to remain in the presence of God while we are at home. While we are at our job. God wants us to be in the presence of God all the time. God is very much pleased in our private life than our public performance. God is pleased with our private prayers and private worship and private lifestyle than our public performance. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us have a private time with God. Let us walk in this path. Hallelujah. Let every husband, wife, children come together to pray at house. When, I mean, when the praises and prayers are offered in that house, that house is a blessed house. No enemy can intrude into that house anymore. Hallelujah. We got so many emotional problems. We got so many personal problems. We have so many relationship problems. We have so many marriage problems. We have so many personal issues. All this come, where all this comes from? From the enemy. I mean, hallelujah. Whatever house giving praises and glorifying God, I believe God will stand as a wall of fire around such houses. And no enemy can intrude in the house. Your children cannot be lost. Your children cannot be drug addicts. Your children cannot not be broken in their marriage when the glory goes to God the house is protected by almighty God number five hallelujah verse eight you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you anointing is the power of God ability of God to do God's call in your life when I'm anointed means I'm receiving some of his abilities, hallelujah, supernatural power into my ordinary life. 
that make me do impossible things possible for him hallelujah whatever i couldn't do before i will be able to do because i receive the ability from him and we cannot limit the anointing speaking in two tongues or just jumping and dancing no 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 if you are anointed you will receive the wisdom you will receive the ability you will become a different person you will be extraordinary when you are anointed you cannot remain in ordinary you will be extraordinary for god hallelujah anointing is given to you to do a task god has given you to complete a task praise the lord so don't limit it don't limit your anointing in that very small circle if you are anointed you will do things that you couldn't do before you will be an extraordinary person because the extraordinary anointing on you if you are anointed you will do the things in an extraordinary way if your ministry is anointed your ministry will not be the same if your musicians are anointed every day things will be different hallelujah hallelujah we want the real move of god in our life number 6 a designed plan for their future jesus said you shall be my witnesses in jerusalem judea samaria even to the remotest part of the globe when you are anointed Jesus said to the local Galileans, local disciples, your ministry is not going to be limited in this place. You're going to go even to the remotest part of the globe. Jesus had a designed plan, designed mission plan for their future. I just want to tell you, God has a designed plan for your future. Don't give up on your life. Don't judge your life seeing the present situation. Jesus has a designed plan for your future. Hallelujah. Don't judge your ministry, judge your life, judge your family life, judge your children's life looking at the present situation. Believe Jesus is in charge of your life. He is in control of your life. Don't give up. Hallelujah. Be hopeful for the best. God said in book of Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 9 my thoughts are not your thoughts no your ways my ways says the lord as the heaven is higher than the earth my thoughts and my ways are higher than your thoughts and your ways god said you have thoughts i know but i also have thoughts you have ways i also have ways but our ways are not same praise the lord you have your three thoughts You have human thoughts. I have heavenly thoughts. I have higher thoughts. You have lowly thoughts. I have higher thoughts. You have earthly thoughts. I have heavenly thoughts. You have human thoughts. I have godly thoughts. You always, we always thinking about your family, future, job, everything. That's because we are human. But Bible says our God also is a thinking God. He always thinks about you. He is not anxious about you. He has thoughts about you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Your thoughts and your views are different. When it comes to God specifically says, my ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. Whatever you are thinking today is not my thoughts about you. Whatever ways you are in now, that is not my way for you. You have to learn how to wait at me. to learn my thoughts hallelujah yeah. sometimes we make our own choices and say it's the holy spirit you know simply people make on god say holy spirit told me holy spirit told me like that people make just unnecessarily use the name of the holy spirit sometime they don't know to wait you now we had a bible college student back in india when he came we had interview for him what made you to join the bible college for 3 years degree college He said, "The Holy Spirit told me to come to this college to learn." In a few months, within three months, we saw him jumping out of the campus without telling anyone, leaving the campus, and someone caught him and brought back to the office. Hey, what happened? What made you to go out without telling anyone? And he still says, "Holy Spirit told me to leave." <laughs> then we asked the question so this holy spirit didn't know this is a 3 years course 
same way some people situationally use name of god in vain they depend on their own emotional thinkings and feelings say this is the holy spirit and within a few months they change their mindset and say now the holy no 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 holy spirit cannot be mistaken god will not say sorry to you yo oh, i did some mistake i know I, i didn't know that was my mistake I, I, hallelujah and the lord won't say sorry you know i apologize to you i should have done this way i did this no no god won't say like that god won't say like that whatever happening in your life today god has his own plans in his life hallelujah god has his own plan for you god won't be mistaken god will not say sorry to you come on remain in the presence of god depend on him trust in his ways trust in his thoughts he has beautiful plan for you he has beautiful higher plan for you some people are very much worried same like uh, pharaoh and his uh, host from uh, you know egypt followed people israel people something is following me i'm not blessed at all hallelujah i believe as a child of god no demons can follow you no cancer can follow you no sickness can follow you no curse can follow you no troubles can follow you no traditional things can follow you but only two things will follow you the goodness of god the mercy of god shall follow you all the days in your life you are the child of the most high god you are not an ordinary person you are the extraordinary you are vip in the sight of god hallelujah you are precious in the very sight of god your life is precious god has higher plans about you say with me today by faith hallelujah my god has a designed plan for my future i'm not going to be lost i'm not going to be i mean discouraged i'm not going to give up i'm not going to live like without direction in my life i'm not going to wander in my life. because god has a great designed plan for me hallelujah i trust in his plan i trust in his purpose number 7 the last one hallelujah verse 11 when jesus was going to the going to heaven two men in white clothing two angels speaking to the men of galilee disciples hey men of galilee why you are looking like this into the sky the jesus whom you have seen going to heaven is going to come back the same manner as you watch him going up to heaven Amen. praise the lord praise the lord the last one was an unfailing promise of the coming of jesus christ Amen. hallelujah unfailing promise of the coming of the jesus christ the first one was a heavenly decree given to them second one was jesus personally appeared to them the personal appearance of jesus christ number 3 jesus gave them the message the message of the kingdom number 4 a command to be in the presence of god maintain god's presence all the time hallelujah hallelujah number 5 praise the lord bible says number 5 the power of the holy spirit amen and Unfa- i mean irresistible power of the holy spirit number 6 a designed plan for their future number 7 an unfailing promise of the coming of jesus christ hallelujah bible says the book of hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 jesus appeared once to take away the sins of the world the same jesus going to come back again for those who stand and eagerly waiting for him eagerly waiting for him if you come to hyderabad city if you come to the train station in hyderabad you can see three groups of people sit st- i mean st- there in the train station the first group you can see resting there sleep some of them sleeping there in the boarding room we call it the boarding room go and ask them hey brother why you are sleeping here you will say that my next connecting train will come in another 10 hours time so i have enough time to sleep the second group you can see sitting on the platform chairs and drinking the hot masala indian tea reading the newspaper sitting on the chair ask them hey brother why you are sitting on the platform chair they will say my next train will come 
in half an hour time or one hour time. I have enough time to have a tea and read the newspaper. The third group you can see standing on the edge of the platform with all the baggages on, ticking in between, crowding themselves. And you can ask them, hey brother, don't stand here like that, it's so dangerous. Why are you standing here? You know, they will say, we heard the announcement that our train will come any time. Any second. We heard the announcement. Train will come any second to this platform. On this track. We are ready to get into the train. Once it's coming. We will, the train will have a two minutes or three minutes stop there. There will be a lot of crowd. If, if you come to the train stations in India. You can't wait there for somebody to call you inside the train. If you are along with that crowd. The crowd will automatically take you to the I mean, train. You cannot look here, there and all because so much crowd there. Hallelujah. Amen. The third group says, we heard the announcement. That's why we are standing here with the baggages to get in the train. The same way, the same way, we have the announcement already. We heard the announcement from heaven. Any time from now, we will hear the sound of the trumpet. Hallelujah. Any time from now, we will hear Jesus coming. Any time he will come. First Thessalonians 4, 16, 17. God will descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel. With the trumpet of God. And everyone, those who are dead in Christ will rise first. And those who are alive will be caught up together with them. To meet the Lord in the air. And we shall be with the Lord all the time. I just want to conclude my sermon with a mission challenge. We are living in the last hour. Of the last day. I want every one of you. Have a mission challenge in your life. As brothers and sisters in the kingdom. What are we really doing for Christ? Are we really fruitful people? Jesus said to the disciples. I have chosen you. So that you shall be fruitful. How disciples can be fruitful? Not like building a huge building. Or making a good money or something like that. A disciple is fruitful when he make another disciple. You can be a fruitful church only when you make more disciples.